shopping is one of the few ways to earn a living in an area as remote as this. And during our stay, we visit Gunther Lisi, an old-timer at trapping. German-born, he was taken prisoner during World War II at age 15 and sent to a Siberian work camp. When freed, he sought the solace of the Canadian wilds. He's just come to the outskirts of Atlan. After years alone in the bush, he now wants to be closer to people again. He's built seven previous log cabins and says he can complete one in two weeks, working alone, providing someone is doing the cooking and chores for him. You have to love the land to live here and history as well. Herman Peterson, retired bush pilot, has voluntarily taken over keeping the town clock wound. It's about the last street clock in B.C. Every nine days it has to be wound. In addition to loving the place, success here means keeping active, even during the cold and the dark of winter. Last winter, Mr. Peterson built this airplane. Next winter, he's going to make a violin. Two shops in Atlin cater to tourists and are glad to send catalogs to serve customers by mail. Work with furs is a big part of the Discovery Shop's operation. Wolf and other local furs are used for parkas. These are new furs, but if you have an old fur coat, let the Discovery Shop remodel it into a modish northern parka, trimmed with a special pattern of fur and a new ruff added. Cloth parkas are a specialty of the cache, the other shop, cloth shells filled with fiber fill linings. Marina says she got tired of seeing everybody running around like uniformed soldiers, all wearing the same kind of parka. So she started making different ones with bright colors and variegated braids. She even gives parka sewing lessons here and in Whitehorse. A distinctive parka lets a person keep individual identity, Marina says. Another outland light spins and weaves as a means of getting the cash needed for staples. Claudia Lombardi lives just out of town with her children and husband. He goes outside to work several months a year. This brings in the sure cash for financing the Lombardi's try at living close to the land, and Claudia's craft work also helps. She uses dog wool, spinning the yarn, and knitting or weaving. She tells us that a Malamute will give four and a half pounds of wool a year. Soft and fluffy and nondescript in color. In an hour, she can spin a pound of the wool into this size ball of yarn. The Lombardies, as the Marys, use only wood for fuel. The garden, including a typical northern greenhouse, supplies vegetables for the table. Milk comes from goats. Eight of them each give about a quart a day. For Claudia, the pattern of life is one familiar to pioneering women throughout North America a few decades ago but a pattern largely gone today.